Well, my names are Ephraim Belem, and I was a member of the UPND and member of parliament for Mbabara Parliamentary Constituency from 2011 until the 6th of April 2021, when I made a conscious decision to resign. And I must add that I was an ardent and probably of a zealous member of the UPND. However, I made a decision to leave the UPND. Contrary to what has been sought in the UPND narratives that I was bought, that I was sought, underlying that actually is an insult to so many citizens who may have entered politics like myself with ideals as opposed to with riches. The assumption is that yes, Ephraim Belem, because he didn't enter politics using riches or fronting riches, therefore he's on the market to be bought or sold like a tomato. That is not true of the many millions who are going to vote on 12th. They have made their own decisions based on what they have seen. I'm always inspired by the sons of Issachar in the Bible who understood the times Israel lived in and what it ought to do. And I always want to understand the times Zambia is living in and what it ought to do. And for doing that, I must never be called names because that's how God has, has made me understand by his grace. And I want to say, unfortunately, the UPND as a political party is on a political party on paper. In terms of practice and function, it has ceased to be a political party. It has become a machinery to divide and destroy this country. That's why in their narratives, if you listen to them carefully, they will never tell you about how they intend to develop this country. But they will tell you about who's black in this country and how themselves they are white, almost declaring themselves as demigods that we must worship their leader and their members. That is not fair to a country. That is not fair to a country. Political contestation must be based on ideas and what they want to do. It's not about abracadabla. Swear me at 10 hours and 12 hours, things will change. That is not politics and that's not how you spy economies to develop. We are not talking about abracadabra here. We are not looking for a magician in a president. We are looking for a president who is a leader, who inspire this nation, who, be, who create building blocks for this nation to prosper, for this nation to, 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 to unite, as opposed to abracadabra. And the narrative is very simple. Everyone is black and they are white. And they will feed that to your children, they will feed that to my children, they will feed it to whoever has access to social media. That's one of the most dangerous, that's one of the most dangerous things the UPND has done, to feed the toxic substances in our children, in our homes, and in the citizens. And to, inst to instill fear that citizens can't make a decision. I am a southerner, and a true southerner for that matter, through and through. However, I don't agree However, I don't agree with the agenda of the UPND and its leadership to isolate my region, to isolate and abuse my province, and use the individual's name as a general descriptor of who a southerner is. A province cannot be isolated because one individual has aspired to be president and then tell everyone else, sit back, don't be anything else until I become a president. What if God has not given that individual to be a president? A southerner is anyone from Kafir Bridge up to Chief Momba. And in there, people are free to make their own decisions. This is not the first time that we're having political contestation. I've said I've been a member of parliament. To be asked to continuously boycott to continuously be abused. For those of my colleagues who are in the UPND or from the UPND who understand this, that even within the UPND, there are things that I could not do because I'm told you, you are a Southerner, you can't 
And it even went to the extent of saying, in parliament, you can't sit on this seat because you are UPND. You are, you, you are, you are, you are, you are a southern. And that was not coming from any other political party apart from the UPND itself. That is being abusive to a region. That is being abusive and drawing back a region. I would rather we move in together and join the rest of the country. <laughs> Look, you people, it's very easy to tell how a dictator behaves. They will find a scapegoat in every situation. They will blame everyone else except themselves. Hitler, in the early days, in the Weimar Republic, blamed the economy on a people he called stabbed us in the back of the Jews. What followed was mass killing. As we see today, the UPND has developed a narrative which distances itself from any situation this country is going through, which is hard. Even in denying the effects of COVID on an economy. I'm not surprised that uh, at times God has a reason why certain individuals have been denied access to executive power. You must agree that God has not allowed you to hold the power. It's not me. It's not me. It's God. Go and wrestle with God. Don't, don't injure people. Don't mime people. Don't destroy people. Don't run a narrative which distances one particular region or province. Because you as an individual, you want to lead the country. How about us who don't want to lead the country? I just want a fair share of development in my region, in my constituents. By the way, His Excellency visited us during this week in Smaubi, in Mapanza, where I come from. And he was inspecting a project that was undertaken. The first ever government project of a secondary school in terms of infrastructure from the time Mbabara became Mbabara. The rest were by colonial masters. Now, why would I want to continue fighting such a person? And why would I want to isolate myself from that kind of development? Today, the UPND is opportunistic. They wake up and tell you how black people are, but never about what they'll do. Somewhere I read in their books that they want to, to reduce the size of government. But they will never tell you which size of government, because government has three branches. Is it the legislature they want to reduce? But people have been saying they want more constituencies. Is it the judiciary they want to reduce? People have been saying they need more judges and magistrates so that the cases move faster. Is it the executive function? We all know that the size of cabinet is decided by the constitution and is written in black and white. So what are they going to reduce? You must read in between lines. The only authority they could have maybe was to reduce the size of the civil service or public service. And I've been seeing some of my colleagues in the public service crapping. Somebody is telling you, I will, I will fire you, I will remove you. When they say reducing, they are talking about firing people. That's why they will not tell you which branch, which area. We must move away from that. I don't think this election is about chancing. I don't think this election is about chancing. It's about a party and this leadership that is going to inspire development. I was privileged in National Assembly to be the chairperson of the Committee on Energy, Water Development and Tourism. And I know the firm foundation that has been laid by the PF under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Edika Chabalungu. For example, the energy policy has been reviewed. The, the Electricity Act, the Electricity Act, the Energy Regulation Act, the Rural Electrification Act, those are laying a foundation for us to develop in the next five years. Not somebody who wake up and say, abracadabra, abracadabra, we, I will improve ele electricity in this nation. No. I'm aware of the Batoka Gorge. I'm aware of the Kafue Gorge, which is excellence, was just commissioned not too long ago. I'm aware of the, 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 the studies that are being done in the, in the, in the, in the Kaoma area on wind energy. 
in the, in the Kafue Gorge area on wind energy. I'm aware of the massive investment in terms of exploration in the Lake Tanganyika area. That is what will spur this economy. That's what will bring energy to this country. Not abracadabra, swear me 10 hours, 14 hours, things will be like that. No. This country needs more serious leadership. And that is my plea to the Zambian people. Read in between the lines. Don't gamble this country on the 12th of, of, of August. Let's vote for a party and a president that has begun to lay a foundation in major sectors of our country. I thank you. The UPND has demonstrated that it's able, together with all of us, champion that cause on behalf of the Zambian people. I know that when troubles come, at times we want to go back. It's common to go back to Egypt where we get tea, where we get uh, food, but we are slaves. There's a tendency to go back. It's human nature. But again, when you realize that the journey actually is to Canaan, I think you are always reminded that you must move until you reach the promised wow. land. <laughs> There's also this tendency to believe that people join political parties to seek elected office. It is okay to come back home, are the words the former Mbabala member of parliament, Ephraim Belemu, used as he defected back to the United Party for National Development, the party he dumped for the Patriotic Front after being left out of the adoption process. The former lawmaker further says he is rejoining the party he fought with for the betterment of the Zambians, he further disclosed that in the few months of being in power, the UPND has proved to be the government that Zambians were longing for. And receiving Mr. Belem on behalf of the UPND, Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Elijah Muchima welcomed the former lawmaker back to the party. He believes the Zambians will benefit from his contributions toward making Zambia a better place. He has since called on the UPND members to embrace the people that will be rejoining the party.